Hello everyone. In last tutorial, we have seen how to implement the Spring security. But if you remember in our code, still we are using a static username and password. So in this tutorial, we are going to make fully dynamic. So it will work for real world uses. And you can easily store user credentials in our database. And with the help of a Spring security, we can authenticate user against those store credentials. So this is the table we are using. And in this table, we have already entered the email ID and name. So first of all, we are going to modify our entity so we can easily store the user credentials. So currently, I am going to use same user entity class to store the user credential. If you want, you can create a separate entity. So let's add three more variables. So this is username, password and role. Let's create getter and setter. So right click, source and you can see getter and setter, select all. So we are going to modify our entity class. So that's why we have added three more variables. Now we need to create a custom user detail service and that place where we are going to load user by username and it will help you when we try to log in. So let's create a class, select your base package new and give the class name here custom user detail service and in the package just add service here. Just add here implement and give your user details. So you can see we are going to implement here user detail service and it will come from a Spring Security Core. So let's try to add unimplemented method. So here you can see one function has been created and that function name is here load user by username and here we are going to pass the username. So currently what is our repository name? Our repository name we are keeping user repository. So we need to auto wire this repository in our custom user detail service class. So copy this one, come to your class and use annotation as auto wire use private user repository. Try to import that one. So we are going to use our repository to find the username. So first of all, we need to create a function in user repository so we can easily get user by username. So go back to your user repository and create one function that return type will be your user just use find by username so we are going to use this function to find user by username and you can see these are the details it's already provided by jpa so do not worry now what let's try to get the user so return type will be your user and we have to use your user repository so we are just going to do a query like user repository dot find by username and here we are going to pass the username. Here two things can be happen. At first scenario, might we will not get username. So what we can do just use here if and before that, let's try to import your user. So you can see we are going to import our model user only. So let's check here like user equal to null. Then we are going to throw an exception. So use your throw new username not found exception and you can add your message so what we can add message let's add the message like user not found with username and whatever username will get in the request let's try to send that thing in the response so in case if you got the user then we have to return the user that will contain our username and password but the problem is here we cannot use the user class because we have already imported on the top. So what we have to do now just use here new and we have to use the package name org dot spring framework dot security dot core. And here we have to use user details dot user. So we have to pass three parameter. First parameter we have to pass the username. So how you can get just use here user dot get username because we already have username and password inside this pojo class or entity class i can say here now we have to send the password user dot get password and at the last we have to use collection dot singleton list collections dot singleton list and let's try to return new simple grant authority so it will contain the user role so let me make little bit big so first of all, we are using a class of user that will comes under Spring Framework Security Code dot user detail, and 
here the return type you can see user and using the new we are going to create a instance for this class and inside that one first of all we are passing username because we have to pass the dynamic username then we are passing the password and this password will be here has and at the last we are using collections dot singleton list so collection dot singleton list create a immutable list containing a single element so you can see the name singleton that means single element and here we are again creating a new instance for simple granted authority and it is simple implementation of grant authority interface which represent an authority granted to the user so with the help of user dot get role we are going to retrieve the role of the user so this is the very important thing please try to do practice so you will understand how it is working during implementation you can start debugging also so you will get some idea so let's move to security config now what we have to do we have to comment this one and we have to implement the new one because we no need to use the static data so first of all let's import our custom user details service class so just use here auto wire annotation and use here private import that one now we have to use DAO authentication provider so let's go down so let's create a another bin and it will be like public and here we are going to use DAO authentication provider this will also come from spring framework security package and this is going to help us during authentication provider configuration now we need to create a new instance for DAO authentication provider so copy this word just create new instance and try to return that DAO so this is just we are using a class that name is here DAO authentication provider now inside that one we are going to set the user detail service and we are also going to set the password encoder so what you can do copy this one just use set user detail service and we already have our custom service because we are going to override the spring security similarly just come and use here set password and already we have password encoder if you don't know then please watch the last video in that video we have created and we have seen how to use that one so our bin is also ready you can see here so first of all we are going to use the bin of DAO authentication provider and in that one we are setting our custom user service class and we are also setting our password encoder so these are the mainly change we have to do whenever we we'll try to enter the credential internally it will call this class and here we'll have username so with the help of username it will try to find the user detail and once it will get the user detail then it will try to send inside that spring framework and it will do internally authentication so currently i am not going to go over how spring authentication is working i can make a separate video in the future but for now just understand like if you pass correct username and password then spring security will provide the correct detail so let's run so let's stop this one and try to run so you can see we are getting error in custom user detail service because we have not added here service annotation so let's try to add here service annotation import it again stop and try to run so if you go to your table and try to refresh so here you can see the three new column has been added so let's try to drop all the data because we are not going to use that existing data so I have dropped let me restart if you want you can just clear the data so if you remember last time we have also implemented swagger ui so now we have to add the user so you can see these are the detail with the help of this detail we can create a new user so similarly if you remember with the help of postman also we created so let's try to add and see what will be happen so you can see now we are getting 403 because we have implemented the spring security and without credential nobody can access so here now user password as a password will also not work because there is no credential in our database so how we can pass this api so if you see our security config class and here we have mentioned like let's authenticate all the requests that is starting with api slash user so due to that we are facing this issue let's try to give the 
permission for that particular post method so how we can do just open your controller and what we can do this is the api responsible to create a user detail so copy this one and let's change like create user so this api how it will call will call by slash api slash user then slash create user so using that we'll try to call so let's copy that api name let's call so you can see still we are getting the error so let's go to your security config and try to give the permission so copy this one let's change as create user and instead of authenticate use permit all so what we are doing we are saying like please give permission for this api but apart from that if anyone is coming slash api slash user then please authenticate so let's again try to run and one more thing before going that one let's try to add the all three details that means username password and user role so these are the details we are going to save in our database so now call that one now you can see still we are getting forbidden that means we don't have permission but why why we are getting this error we already allow our permit all so how we can try to to find the root cause so open your application dot properties so let's add a spring framework security as a debug mode so we can see what is the root cause happening stop your server restart let's call that one so if you see in the console it is directly showing like you can see here securing post slash api slash user create user and invalid csrf token found for this api that means now invalid csrf token error is coming so the issue we are encountering is related to csrf protection and spring security has csrf protection enabled by default so which is causing 403 status code that means forbidden so what we can do we have to either disable the csrf protection for that specific endpoint or we have to include the csrf token in our request so for now let's try to disable that csrf token for that api and just use here dot csrf so use csrf dot ignore request matcher and let's try to add that api so we are saying like for this particular api please ignore the csrf token let's stop and again restart your server let's call that api so you can see we are able to save the user detail but the problem what we can see here if we run you can see the password is showing directly so as i told in the beginning of tutorial we have to secure this user password so how you can do so let's open that controller and here we are going to get the request so if you remember in security config we have used password encoder right so similar thing we have to also use here so let's copy this one go to your controller use auto wire annotation and use here private let's try to import now what we are going to do we'll just use here user dot set password whatever we'll get the password now this password we are going to secure so how you can secure just use here password encoder dot encode and we'll try to send the user password here so i'm just going to encrypt the password with the help of password encoder now we stop that one and let's run so let's change like john2 john2 user2 password2 if you want you can move this rule from this request and you can put into your controller directly so now you can see we are getting password as a hashing that means our password is now secure so if you refresh you can see the password so nobody can guess what is the user password so for that we have to always use password encoder and it is using inside the big crypt so let's try to load our api so what is our credential so we have to use user2 and password2 so let's enter user2 password2 so you can see i am able to get the user detail whatever user i have saved in our database so i will remove this one because it's not useful at all so using that api i am able to get the user credential 
if you want you can change something like it will not provide the password into response but this password is encrypted so do not worry so you understand how we have implemented so at last video we did a static one so here we have implemented fully dynamic so still you have a doubt how it is working then try to go through security config class and try to put the debugging and this is also very important one in case if you pass wrong what will be happen let's try to see so let's stop this one now refresh so let me send user 5 and password is correct so you can see here we are getting bad credential but if you see inside that one so here it is showing fail to find user user file everything is working fine so that's it for today in next video we are going to implement jwt token and trust me that video will be so much interesting have a good day bye